They say, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Well, let's make our enemies from scratch. Alright y'all, welcome back. We're going over a full, complete, usable enemy from scratch. This is just a regular sprite here with no bones. I'm just going to add a light to it. To illuminate him, because the level's kind of dark, so we want to be able to see him. I'm going to make it red, nice and simple. And then now we can go on and check out the enemy script. Now this script is kind of long, I'm not going to lie, but I only really want to go over some important things here. And then I'm going to just leave the whole script in the comments below. So the first thing I want to go over is that public float distance I had highlighted there. We really only use it once, and it's for our Raycast. And I kind of want to go over that in a different video, so we'll come back to that. But this script pretty much handles everything from the amount of points that you get when the enemies destroy it to the enemy's line of sight and then the fire rate and then the arm tip is where the bullet is going to instantiate from then we have our sprite renderer and then our game object but just calling all that stuff in the uh, start method there the player is just finding the transform of the uh, player object and then our update method we go over a physics 2d we go over that a little bit in another video so i'll skip that and then we have our distance from player and that's basically just uh, calculating how far away the player is from the enemy and then if the player is within or not within the line of sight then we're using that sprite method to flip our x-axis to uh, make sure the uh, enemy always faces the player and then we have our methods down here below our face player and then our patrol and then that on gizmos is just so we can see how far away visually the line of sight will be and i'll show you that there in a second then we have our patrol method which has our ray cast in it which is basically just checking where the ground is then we're just moving our sprite left to right at a certain speed we're calling that method when our player is out of sight and then when our player is in sight we're calling this attack method and in our attack method, we're just calling that animation and then instantiating the bullet. And then the bullet takes care of the rest from there. And that's pretty much it for that script. So heading back into Unity, we can go ahead and drag it on in to our new created enemy. And fill out all of these variables. So here we'll make an empty game object for our fine ground raycast. We'll drag it to the bottom right of that sprite. And next, you know, we'll drag in our rigid body 2D, set our gravity scale to zero. So he'll have a nice floating effect. And then we'll drag in our bullet prefab and make a uh, shot point that we'll drag into our arm tip. We'll have it go right at his mouth so it'll kind of come from the center of him. Then we'll drag in our player object, which is our doodle man. Then our sight here, let me show you here, the circle around, this is the gizmo we were talking about earlier. So once the player goes inside that line of sight, the enemy will stop and then the attack function will play. So last thing we're adding here is our little death particle system that I created. It's not really too flashy, but let's press play and see what we got so far. So our raycast is working and the enemy is stopping when the player is in the line of sight but he's not attacking so let's take a look at our script and see what's going on. So we have our animation that's supposed to be playing but if you're like me then I have not created it yet so let's go ahead and make some little default animations here I'll call this eye guy attack. and. Like I said, this is a simple sprite, so I'm just going to kind of simply just kind of add something in so you'll know that he's attacking. I'm just going to make him go big and small for a second here. And notice I'm doing that by changing the scale. And then I'll change the color. It's not really showing up too great in the sliding, but it's enough to show that it'll work. And then we'll add in a default kind of move animation that'll just kind of bounce here. And that 
that should be good enough there. Okay, and I'll set the uh, move animation to be default, and then the attack transition will be when we have the uh, attack trigger going. And it's already set up in the uh, script, so just make sure the animation is on. And something else is going on here. Something with the animation, yeah. So when I added the uh, move script, instead of changing the scale, I changed the rotation. And that kind of threw off the raycast. So when the game starts, the enemy just kind of keeps going in one direction forever. So I'll just go back and change that. So we're adjusting the scale, not the rotations, because the rotation will mess up the raycast. So if we go back and do it again, boom, he's patrolling and he's attacking. Everything's working perfectly. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and take it a step further and add a health bar above our enemy. So I'm just going to add a canvas and set it to world space, but then we'll have to scale our canvas down small enough to fit solely around our enemy here. And all of my objects in this game are really small, so I have to scale it down quite a bit here. Almost there. Okay, now I'm going to add in a uh, UI image and stretch that out a little bit like that, call it health bar, then I'm going to come over and duplicate it and we'll call that empty health bar, make that a little darker, and then I have these kind of pretty basic health bar images that I'm going to use for this example. empty health bar there and then we're going to change the image type to field and the horizontal there we go and this red for the health bar is a little dark but it should be fine now let's get a look at our health script so this is pretty basic stuff. We're just grabbing our health bar images that we just made and setting a public float for our health and our max health. And then having our health bar decrease by a certain speed. And then our update just pretty much checks the uh, health amount. And then it adjusts the fill level according to how much health the enemy has. And that's pretty much it there. You know, you can always hit me in the comments if you have any questions about it. I'll have this displayed in the comment section also. And be sure you add that Unity Engine UI. So uh, go ahead and save that and come back out and drag that. And then drag our health bar and our empty health bar. And then our max health is going to be equal to our enemy script max health. So now we go, we can see it actually didn't do any damage because we don't have our tags and our layer set so be sure to do that so we'll go back and it's still not taking damage oh of course because we didn't add in the box collider so I'll go ahead and adjust that accordingly and set it to his trigger if it's not already like that by default so that's how our bullets work so now we can destroy our enemy and our death particle plays. I know it's going a little fast, so I'm going to do it a couple times here. And actually, let's go back out and change that health bar to white so we can see it just a little clearer. But yeah, that's pretty much a full run through of how we're setting up our enemies for right now feel free to hit me in the comments hope this helps you guys out catch you guys next time peace yes yes until next time take it easy you dick